Riverbed friends. I hope you all are doing great today. So I am here at Maple Park Cemetery and I'm getting ready to show you the grave of Davis Tut. Now apparently his name was actually David and he hated it when people called him Davis. That was according to the wonderful nice lady that I met at the office here. Unfortunately for him, history remembers him as Davis Tut. So we're going to take a trip down to the town square and I will show you where everything happened. Join me. Please, if you like this video, please like it, please share it, please subscribe. To help support the channel, it helps me a lot to be able to continue to make these videos. So, thank you so much, and let's have an adventure. At the time of the shootout, Davis Tut was 26 years old. He served in the Confederate Army during the Civil War. Hickok served for the Union, and there were some people who thought that maybe that had something to do with their disagreement, which ultimately led to the shooting. I'm not sure I think that it did. I think it probably was more of a personal issue. And of course, money was involved and insults and making someone feel, uh, making Hickok look bad, which is never a good idea. So here is Davis Tut's grave. We are in Maple Park Cemetery. It has been here for 146 years. He was originally from Arkansas. He did have numerous siblings. One of the reasons he may have gotten in a fight with Hickok possibly was because Tut thought Hickok might have been messing around with his sister. One of his sisters, he had several. According to a post I found from an ancestor, one of his sisters had two children out of wedlock. Whether one of them was Hickox or not is unknown. But there are some, there's talk that that may have had a lot to do with Tut being upset with Hickok. Tut did not have a headstone until 1991 when this headstone was placed. On this spot in 1865 sat the Lion Hotel. And on July 20th, in a room upstairs, possibly in Hickok's own room because he was living here at the time, Hickok and Davis Tut were playing poker. Hickok lost. Tut accused Hickok of owing him $35 from a past gambling debt. Hickok disagreed and said he only owed 25 and that he had it on the books downstairs. He had proof that it was only $25. Now, a gentleman by the name of J.W. Orr was there that night, and he says that Hickok at some point set his watch on the table, and Tut took it as collateral for the 10 extra dollars he felt that he was owed. Orr said that Hickok warned him, don't you dare go around flaunting that around town, and if you don't return this to me, something will be done. So... Tut left and proceeded to flaunt and taunt Hickok with the watch throughout the following day. On July 21st, Hickok would have walked down South Street toward the square. Witnesses say he was standing and waiting or sitting and waiting at a general store, which would have been located in one of these buildings right here, maybe on the other side of the street. Uh, I'm assuming it's that corner because that's where he was standing. The Harris building right here would have been the courthouse at the time. And it had these arches. And so this is where Tut came up around the courthouse. This marker, it's a little bit in the road, but that marks the exact spot Hickok stood when he shot Tut. So Tut was 75 yards to the northwest of this spot. 75 yards is a really long way with a pistol like that. So straight ahead through those trees in front of the Harris building is where Tut was standing. It's sad, but you can't see it. And of course, in 1865, none of these trees were here. None of this landscaping, none of these sidewalks. It would have just been a dirt expanse. And he would have had a clear view of Tut standing across the way. Now, before he saw Tut, Hickok did tell a witness that he was sitting there waiting for Tut and that the Tut family had been abusing him or treating him roughly. So the fact that he was waiting for Tut 
does not sound like self-defense to me. It sounds like he was specifically waiting for Tut, but it is what it is. If you see that little gold marker in the street there, this is where Tut was standing. And of course, both of these are right in the middle of the street. This one is more in the street than the other one. So Tut was standing right here and the, to the 75 yards to the southeast is where Hickok was. So looking straight ahead toward that area we just came, kind of from behind that sculpture. And then behind that, you can see there are some flower bed type things. So Hickok would have been standing right behind those flower beds. Hickok saw Tut come from behind the courthouse and he stood up and he said to Tut, Tut, don't you dare come across this square wearing my watch. Upon hearing Hickok speaking to him, Tut reached into the back of his waist to get his gun. Every witness saw Tut go for his, his gun. Hickok did not wait. He decisively pulled out his gun and shot him. Witnesses differ on whether or not Tut fired. Lorena Lee said she did see a flash come from Tut's gun. However, she did not hear a second shot. I read witness accounts from several people who did not hear a second shot. One witness did say he saw that Tut's gun had recently been fired, but he could not tell if it had been super recently. I don't know if he felt it to see if it was hot, but either way, if Tut fired, he missed. And Tut himself was shot all the way through the body throughout his chest from the right side of his body back to the left. He staggered a few feet, a few steps toward the courthouse, did not quite make it all the way to the arches and fell right in front of the building, landing on his back. One witness came up to Hickok right after the shooting and basically indicated something to effect of, wow, that was harsh or that was really serious, or what have you, basically, what have you done? And Hickok responded, well, it's too late now, and I'm not sorry. I am now walking beside, toward the back of the Harris building. I am showing you right now where Tut's body was taken, and we are headed toward that alley right ahead. This is present day Patton Alley, and this alley is where Tut's dead body was taken. In 1865, this building was a livery and upstairs where those four windows are was a doctor's office run by Dr. Edwin Ebert. Down below, you can see the, the strange doorway there. That's where wagons would have been taken. That's why it's such an interesting entrance. So, Actually, somebody was here and let me in, and I'm really excited about that. I didn't expect it. But these beams are original to the building. At the time, this was a horse stable. So down here, and where the bar is over there, would have been the back. And they would have pulled the wagons in from over here. And then the wagons would have been stored in between these beams. So there would have been little corrals or garages. And then the doctor's office is right here. Yeah, this wall used to not be here. This was put in by us. Ah, okay. So this would have been all open up kind of. Okay, so it would have been a pretty sizable doctor's yeah. office yeah. then. So they they just carried Tut here. It was only a, a half a block or maybe a block. They carried him here to this doctor's office. And the doctor took a look at him and pronounced him dead. And yeah, he noted that the bullet went in the right side of his body between ribs five and seven and exited on the left side of his body between five and seven. So he was standing sideways with raising his gun, right-handed, I would have to assume, to fire back. This is the stairway that they would have carried the body up. So you can see the neat old bricks there used to be a, it's really dark, I'm sorry. There used to be a window here, it looks like. So here we are at the end. Guys, I am so excited I got to go into that former doctor's office. I did not expect that at all. That guy was so nice. 
So that is the story of the first documented, maybe even only, quick draw gunfight in the history of the Old West. I'm sure a lot of you have noticed, though, that a gunfight like this is probably in every Western you have ever watched. And a lot of that is because of this incident right here between Hickok and Tut. Harper's Weekly wrote an article about this event, and I read it, and it is just terrible and full of inaccuracies, and it paints a very negative picture of the people of Springfield and basically said that everybody lays around and sleeps all day and is as lazy as can be and they're dirty and they dress like hillbillies. You know, just these awful stereotypes that people in this region have dealt with for since the beginning of time, uh, since people have been settling here. So, you know, and it, it did a lot to, a lot of them are probably made up, just these made up stories about what a big hero Hickok was in the war and how clearly in this incident he was in the right. And so any factual information I did not take from that article. I did read it because I thought it was important, but only court case testimony did I ever look at or use for factual information. The legacy of this, of that article, was making everybody in the United States know who Wild Bill Hickok was. It gave him that hero reputation. Of course, it said he killed hundreds of men by 1867, which is completely ridiculous. Today, it's believed Hickok killed about 10 men. If we have someone today who kills 10 people outside of war, we call them a serial killer. So he was a dangerous guy. He was 39 years old when he was killed. He lived 11 more years after the shooting to 1876. At that time, he had just gotten married. He had moved to the Dakota Territory to Deadwood, which is in current South Dakota. He was killed playing poker. He was shot in the back by Jack McCall while he had his back to the door, just flat out assassinated. Jack McCall said he did it because he was avenging his brother's death, who he claimed Hickok had killed. McCall was tried in, it was a territory, so the trial actually was not official. So even though he was acquitted, after he left that area and went to Wyoming, he would not keep his mouth shut. He bragged to everybody he met that he had killed Hickok. So much so that the U.S. Marshals had enough to arrest him. He was arrested. He was tried again in an actual legitimate trial. He was found guilty of murder and he was hanged. And to this day, people believe that shootouts like the one I've just told you about happened everywhere and happened all the time. And they just didn't. And even this one didn't happen the way they do in movies. It wasn't a, I'll meet you at dawn, bring your pistol and your second. You know, it wasn't like one of those gentleman duels they used to have. It was literally just an organic reaction. Tut reached for his gun and Hickok was faster. <laughs>